Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use QQ plots to test some key assumptions of the distributions of your data. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. There are a few ways to actually get QQ plots, and I'll show you the two most common that I use. The first actually isn't under the QQ plots menu, but rather it's actually under the explore tool. That's a tool that I cover in a different video, but I'll show you how I get it here. Under analyze, descriptive statistics, explore, we can put in a variable, and I'm actually just gonna put in the variable age because it's a variable that's mostly normally distributed, though not quite. Under plots, we actually ask for the normality plots with tests. For this, I'm gonna turn off box plots, I'm gonna turn off stem and leaf plots, but I'll ask for the histogram because I wanna see what the distribution looks like. I'll click continue and then I'll run this. What I see first and foremost right here is my test of normality. As a reminder, the Shapiro-Wilkes test right here tests to see if the data that we have are distributed normally or not. The null hypothesis is that the data are normally distributed. And if we reject the null hypothesis, we say that they are not normally distributed, which is the case here. These are not normally distributed data. And in fact, we see that in our histogram right here. Indeed, these data are right skewed because we have a nice long tail here on the right side. And we see that already from the histogram, but we can confirm that with our QQ plot, which is right here. The QQ plot, which is our quantile quantile plot, tests the assumption that these data are distributed normally. And the way we read this is we look at these dots and we compare them to this line. If the dots more or less perfectly line up against that line, we can say that the data are normally distributed. If they deviate in some significant way, as they do here, we cannot say that anymore. In fact, we can say that this is not a normally distributed variable. I personally find the subjectivity of this rather difficult, and so if you're trying to compare your data to a normal distribution, I actually strongly favor using the Shapiro-Wilkes test. One of the advantages of QQ plots, though, is that you don't have to just compare them to a normal distribution. But before I talk about that, there's one more chart that's shown. This is the detrended normal QQ plot. And the way to read this is actually very similar to the chart above, except now we're looking at this horizontal line. And if the dots more or less line up along that horizontal line without any systematic variation, the data are normally distributed. In this case, they're not. Now, I've actually gone ahead and looked at this data file that we're using, and I've tried every single variable to see if any of them are normally distributed, and they're not. So just for this video and maybe some others that I'm gonna talk about distribution SKUs, I actually have a second data file, which I'm gonna be calling distributions, and that file is available and linked to below. And that file actually consists exclusively of simulated data, unlike our current data set, which is real human responses. So I'll show you the data set right now. It's just three variables, one that I have intentionally generated to be right skewed, one that I've intentionally generated to be left skewed, and one that I've generated to be normally distributed. So you can see the data are here. This is just random data, they don't mean anything. And in fact, why don't we repeat our steps to see what these data look like using the explore tool. So under analyze, descriptives, explore, we're gonna add all three of these variables. Under plots, again, we're gonna ask for the histogram, we'll uncheck stem and leaf and uncheck box plot and ask for the normality plots with tests, and we'll go ahead and run this. So we see a few things here. First of all, if we look at our test of normality, our right and left skewed variables have a significant Shapiro-Wilk test, which tells us that they are not normally distributed. But our normally distributed variable, because I've made it so, in fact shows a non-significant Shapiro-Wilk's test, which tells us that we can't reject the null hypothesis that the data are normally distributed. So if we take a look at these in the histograms, we see that our variable that is right skewed is very right skewed, right, a long, long tail on the right. If we look at the QQ plot, we see that it's wildly off of this main line right here, the solid line, confirming that it's not normally distributed. That's true as well with the detrended normal QQ plot. For our left skewed variable, again, super strong left skew with a long tail on the left side over here. Again, with our QQ plot, we see that it's very much not normally distributed. That's confirmed here as well. We see the same with our detrended normal QQ plot, as evident by the fact that these dots are wildly off of this solid line. And now we come to our normally distributed variable. So again, as a reminder, I created this variable to be normally distributed, so it's no surprise that it in fact is. And that is confirmed both by our Shapiro-Wilkes test from above, as well as this QQ plot. So this is what a QQ plot would look like if you have a relatively normally distributed variable. It's not perfect. We see that some of these values do fall off the lines, but it's pretty close. And it's close enough for us to say this variable is normally distributed. In the detrended normal QQ plot, it looks like there's lots of variation, but if you actually check the scale carefully, those are tiny, tiny, tiny deviations. And so really this is fitting that line quite nicely. But this of course is only about a normally distributed variable. There are many other distributions that we might wanna compare our data to. And to do that, we can't use the explore tool. We actually have to use a different tool called the QQ plot tool. I'll jump back to our other data set, looking at YouTube viewing habits, and we'll see how this particular tool works. So under analyze, 
descriptive statistics QQ plots, we can actually see that you can change the test distribution away from normal to many other distributions, including things like chi-square distributions, exponential distributions, and so on. The plot will basically look the same. So let me just put one together for you. We'll compare, let's say, to an exponential distribution, the variable page one RT, which is the amount of time spent on the first page in seconds. If I include that, I can also check other options if I want to, like, like transforming my data, if I feel like that might standardize it a bit more, and as well as changing some other options, which honestly we don't use all that often. So I'll leave them as is. If I do this, I get a result that looks as follows. So my QQ plot looks a little bit different now, right? That line is much steeper than it was for our normal distribution, but the interpretation is the same. We look to see if these dots line up against this line. They don't. And so we say this variable is not exponentially distributed. The QQ plot tool, however, does not give us a histogram, so we can't quite see what it looks like. If we do want to see, we can always run a histogram using the explore tool. So at this point, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try this for yourself. In particular, use the QQ plot tool using the variable page two RT. So this is a different reaction time. This is the amount of time spent on the second page and compare it to whatever distribution you think is worth comparing it to. Go ahead and give that a try now. So hopefully you've done that and I'm gonna do it as well. So if I go to analyze descriptive statistics QQ plots, I will swap out page one RT with page two RT. And just for fun, I'll compare this to a log normal distribution. I'll hit go. And we see right away that this is not log normally distributed. If it were, these dots would be lined up along this line. They are not. And therefore we can say this variable is not log normal distributed. You can compare it to whatever distribution you feel appropriate. And depending on what you're doing next, like running a regression of some form, this information is very useful to understand if you violated some of those critical assumptions. Again, QQ plots are incredibly useful for visualizing whether a variable maps onto a particular distribution that you want to understand. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.